Dennis. But now I can't see the others. Maybe there's something else I can do. I, I basically can only see the active speakers on mine. If, if you um, grab on the left hand side or on the side of the column, it might be at the top or the side um, of where all the faces are. There's a little spreader bar. You can make it bigger and have everybody showing as well as whatever's being shared. I'm now seeing you in a straight line if that's any better. <laughs> <laughs> that's one option. <laughs> okay, I'll uh, call the meeting to order. Um, and I'll bring up the minutes from the last meeting. <clears throat> okay, do you see the minutes from the last meeting? Yep. yep. All right, I'll give you a few minutes to read them. Um, because I didn't send them out with the email. Is there more than one page? The only thing on the second page was the adjournment. Okay. All right. Thank you. Can I have a motion to approve? So moved. Second. Second. Any comments? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? Okay, minutes pass. Uh, next item on the agenda is. the emergency cl climate emergency re resolution. Um, I tried to incorporate the comments that I got back. And um, I guess the first thing is we, we discussed last time um, trying to make it a more readable document without the whereas is and be it resolved on every line and everything and to um, uh, make it more, a little bit more towards um, Stonington relevant information. Um, does anybody have any comments just as to the general format rather than the content? We'll go through the content in a minute. I generally thought it was very readable. I thought it, uh, it hit the nail on the head for for general things, I, I still have my, my general objection to calling it a climate emergency declaration. And well, I don't we'll know where that. you want to discuss we'll that. that. When we discuss the content. Okay. Any other comments? Okay. Hearing none, we'll start going through this. Um, now, Dennis, you can start. Um, Dennis doesn't feel that we should call this a climate emergency declaration. He can explain his feelings on that. Yeah, uh, yeah I think my, you know, here, here's my problem with this. I mean, we had uh, an inconvenient truth, which was, came out in 2006. This was after years and years of people of being aware of climate change and climate change issues coming up. And yes, as we get closer to a catastrophe, it becomes more of a, now I'll use the, the air quotation marks, emergency. But I think using the term emergency tends to politicize this. And I mean, I. I don't want this to be a political statement. I want it to be an action plan. I want to see people to t pick it up and use it. And I'm, I'm afraid that if we use the term emergency, we're going to start raising the hair on some people's backs and we won't be able to establish a broad coalition 
of the kind of folks that we need to get action moving forward. So what and would you call it instead? I would call it a climate action plan, a climate action declaration if you want to do it that way. But I would, I would avoid using the term emergency. And I, there, it, there are minor tweaks that could be made through this that would, that would be consistent with that. I think the, uh, the document that uh, Rick provided from Bend, Washington, uh, excuse me, Bend, Oregon, uh, referred to it as a climate action plan. I mean, it's, I, I understand why people would like to call it a climate emergency. But on the other hand, I feel that it causes more grief and politicizes it more than it should. In fact, this is one of the reasons that I abstained uh, on the on the last vote is because I feel strongly that th that that simple semantics issue makes it makes it very politically divisive. I I agree with all the all the things that are mentioned. I have no disagreement with them whatsoever, but I have a problem calling it a climate emergency. Can I make a comment? Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. So um, I, I I agree in some respects with um, according uh, along those lines um, because when I read it, some of these things are things that we in Stonington can't solve. Um, but the things that we do have to address and we do need to solve is our coastal resiliency and sea level rise. Those things are happening yes. and we can see it and we can take action on that. And I think it's, it's imperative that we take action on it because a large portion of our, and I, I don't know what the percentage is, but our tax base is dependent upon vulnerable properties um, that 10 years from now may just be flooded all the time. And it is really in 10 years. So um, I think that stating, um, and I don't know if, uh, I don't know if Rick, if you passed around that article that I, that I, I sent to you, if you got it or not, but it had something to do with, while the Paris Accord is a very nice goal, if the destruction of the tropical rainforest doesn't stop, it, it doesn't matter. So, um, so even if even if we got down to the amount of carbon dioxide emissions that the Paris Accord said were good guidelines, and mind you, China doesn't have to do anything for another 10 years. Um, the rapid destruction of the tropical rainforest, which are the lungs of the planet, I mean, there's enough people on the planet that we're going to expel enough carbon dioxide to keep the climate, you know, changing. So I think I think acknowledging what you know, and, and again, taking the, you know, the political nature out of it um, and acknowledging what's real here in Stonington, what we're already seeing and what we need to take um, action on with respect to I know, our zoning regulations and, our, and our, uh, our budgets. I think that is a directive and a scope that people can embrace and say, okay, I, this is something that we can do. Stonington's not gonna change the climate. All right, and we are, um, and I and I think from the last one, we are now considered a, um, a Connecticut resilient community, and we have a bronze star. So, um, so we are doing things to impact all of this. Um, but anyway, so that those, those are my those are my those are my thoughts on having it be something that everybody can embrace rather than. Do something that you just want to pull the covers up over your head and say we're never going to solve this. But there are things that we can do, and that, those are the things that I'd like to, I, I I want us to focus on. I think if we focused on it, there we, there would be a greater degree of success. I'm not sure I picked up whether you're saying we should keep emergency or not keep emergency. Oh yeah, so I think um so I think that like um. So saying something like coastal resiliency and sea level rise emergency action or emergency, I think like if you say it in that sense and take the word climate out, um, because these are things we need to acknowledge and adapt to, we're not going to change them, right? So no matter what Stonington does, we're not going to change the fact that the, um, 
you know, in the next 10 years, we're going to have another six inches of, of, um, of sea level rise down on the coast and in the Mystic River. But there are things that we can do to make us more resilient to it. And I think that will create the awareness about, you know, the impact of what we're all doing. So I think having the word emergency in there, but having it be directed more towards the things that we're actually experiencing right now. Could I say that I think that for those of us who are experiencing it in our own communities and in our own yards and having the water come up across the road and so forth, it feels like an emergency. Yeah. It feels very much like an emergency. And there are many people who, who feel that now, who didn't feel that before. I think they, they really feel it's important. And I think that to have, to have um, the option of, of saying it's an emergency, so we're going to need help from the state and the federal. You know, if we just say, well, we're, you know, we're, we'd like a little help here, that's one thing. If we say it's an emergency, that's another. And I think we can legitimately say that. At least many of us can. Wonder if I wonder if it would be good to take emergency out of the title of it or out of the you know what this is, and then use full sentences to discuss in the body of it or in the body of the letter why certain aspects of this are truly emergencies, meaning there are things that either we can deal with, or no kidding, this is going to happen in the next year or two, um, and just because I agree that having it. If, if it's where it is now, it, we're going to have to spend time probably explaining to some people what we really mean by that before we even get to the, the, to the meat of the, of the topic. And possibly putting it in as a, in a sentence would be a better way to go. Can I um, say something as well? I just think that, you know, we have a, a little bit of a, a branding problem in Stonington and that we already pretty much have our Coastal Resiliency Action Plan. Um, although the word action isn't in the title, we have a Coastal Resiliency Plan. Um, and, uh, and I think that this is saying, okay, you know, we need to do something immediately with these plans. Um, the word emergency puts that, puts that impetus on it um, that I'm not sure is replaceable. You know, I, I understand the issue with it potentially being political, but, um, but I also think that, that I agree with Julia that that's how people are feeling. That's the uh, kind of the, the, um, the, the right phrase for what we actually intend to do with this. And I, and I would hate to, I'd hate to lose that word. Um, although I'd be perfectly happy with the, with June's suggestions as well. So I'll speak to it as well. Um, I think going back to the original document from um, Helen and Sarah, my sense was that um, they're tapping into a global organization that is expressing itself in the United States and in Connecticut in particular. And if I'm reading, if I'm reading it correctly, they are going at the climate emergency, which suggests that if we don't stop carbon emissions, reduce carbon emissions, I should say, and you know, cue to that 1.5 um, centigrade change within the next five to 10 years, we're cooked as, you know, as we know things. I mean, that, that is what the research says. That's, that's there. I mean, whether it was said, you know, with an inconvenient truth or whether it was said with the Paris Accords. I mean, so in that sense, I feel it is an emergency and it's tapping into something else, which is something bigger than sea level change and property values in Stonington. So that speaks to leaving it as an emergency. I think that was the original tent. But having said that, I'm also really um, respectful of um, the views, I think was Dennis's views and anybody else's who say, if you use this language, it won't go through, June. You know, if, that, if, if, it's, it's, if it's a language issue and it won't go through, then, you know, I could, I could see, um, I can see the, comp the possibility of a compromise, but, you know, really, I think that this task force might want to think about where it puts its chips, you know, on, you know, 
small measures that will keep us going for another 10 or 15 years or willing to also put chips down on the bigger issue, which is a global emergency. May well, I? Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Jason, go ahead. Oh, just, thank, oh, thank you very much, Dennis. I, actually, your, your point's taken, um, and again, thank you all for, for having us too. Um, you know, and I was thinking, sitting here thinking about what Dennis said, but, and I do think that's one of our challenges. Um, when I met with Helen and Sarah and Roger, and we've talked a lot about this, um, one of the things we absolutely felt strongly about was that this is an, is an emergency and that we really should call it what it is. And I think, I'll just give you one example. You're right. It, we, we do run the risk of this being a politically divisive kind of an issue. And we've got to be careful to get ahead of that. And one of the things we need to do, and to Dennis's point, this emergency doesn't necessarily feel like one to everybody. But, you know, we have to educate the public that a geological emergency or a climate related emergency is different and has a different feel. You could go a lifetime and maybe not notice it. It's not like a house fire kind of emergency, right? It's just a bigger, slower one. Uh, but I think the scientists have been pretty clear that we have to address it as an emergency. And the second thing I would simply say is, um, if we declare something other than an emergency, then our document won't talk to other documents. The Middletown, the New Haven, and there's a whole bunch of other towns right now looking at passing emergencies, and that's what they're calling it. And I think we, we have an opportunity to kind of um, link with them and fall in line with them as well. So for those reasons, I think I, I, it would be my opinion um, that we rally around the term emergency, but to Dennis's point, you know, we, we really do have to educate people as to why it's an emergency that might not necessarily feel like one the way we would expect it to. Well, Mary, Mary Ellen, you have any comments? Um, regarding the, the use of emergency? Yes. I, yeah, I, I mean, I do think that for what this document is, it is a, a climate emergency declaration. Um, I think that laid out in there is our action plan, but this is like we're following suit from like what Jason said, what other um, other towns are doing. So this is kind of the, the climate emergency declaration you can kind of see is just kind of like that is the title of what this document is meant to do, which is to elevate this to a level beyond just our town. Um, so we would be part of something bigger by using the, the word emergency. However, thinking of our town, if we feel that it won't pass um, using that word, then that is definitely something that we would have to discuss. I personally think that enough of people are going to see that climate is an, that this is an emergency right now and that we need to, to act. So I think we're worrying, from my standpoint, I think we're worrying a little bit too much about like the fine details and less about the overarching what this document is meant to do. I, I would um, tend to agree that emergency needs to stay in. Um, as far as you know, sea level rise and an action plan, we have the coastal resiliency plan, we have the hazardous mitigation plan. They've been sitting on the shelf for two or three years at least, and the town hasn't taken any action to do much of anything on those. Um, no main, money for it. <laughs> I'm speaking, please. The main thrust of this document is kind of to get awareness with other towns to, to combine to get the state and federal money um, to be allocated towards the climate crisis. Um, and uh, is, um, when I was doing research for this, there's like 1,800 other uh, mayors and selectmen around the world that have all declared this a climate emergency. Um, so if we want to join in and be part of that push to up the game and get things going, um, I would think uh, climate emergency 
is necessary to be in the document. I don't believe that um, if you change it to a climate action, I believe the same people that are going to object to having a call the climate emergency are going to say climate, you know, climate change doesn't exist. Um, and and I, I, I don't think there's going to be that much of a difference between the people that object and the people that don't object. And I believe in the town, there are more people that would be for it being called the climate emergency than there are against. Um, you saw the, the email that Danielle sent me um, and there were a bunch of people copied on there. Um, we didn't, no one from the task force, I believe, solicited any input um, as far as support for this yet. Um, so those were people that had just either read our minutes or, or heard it, or maybe they, they got information from Helen and, and Sarah, but, um, um, you know, without even trying, there's people already contacting the selectman's office. So um, um, I would want to keep emergency in there. Does anyone else on the call have comments? Could I say something? Yes. Roger. Yep. First of all, thank you very much, all of you, for discussing this so openly and politely. It's really important. I think it's a demonstration on how we can talk about this subject in a, in a you know, good civil way. Um, you know, Dennis has a good point that there are some political concerns. Uh, this is already political. And part of what we're trying to do with this is make it a reasonable, polite, respectful, political approach to solving problems that are bigger than cities, bigger than states, and that we are in the middle of. Uh, hence the climate emergency resolution. And uh, so I think we can, if we keep educating people uh, and talking to people and presenting information, uh, I think Stonington would, would pass this. I, um, working with Jason and Helen and Sarah and other people in Stonington and around the area, uh, I, I hear very broad support for this. Will there be some people who don't want it? Yes. But I must stress that the science, we're already in it. It's not coming at some point in the future. We all are already experiencing things that are impacting how we recover from storms, how we spend our money on our infrastructure, where we're going to put our infrastructure in the future. Uh, and also what our ordinances might look like in flood zones and coastal areas and things like this. And, uh, and Rick was, you know, and June mentioned financing. Uh, again, our purpose for doing this in cities across Connecticut is to help get you money. Uh, this, is, this is an emergency and um, a number of people in the federal government have stated that. And we can see in Connecticut that there's great effort to try to do something about climate change. But uh, we need a greater fortified citizenry approach to this than more and more uh, ideas just out of Hartford that, again, we don't get, get done. So that's kind of my take on it is um, as, a, as a geologist who's worked on climate off and on during my career and worked around the world. Uh, I've seen what has changed in my lifetime and it's profound. We've, we've lost species, we've lost uh, lives and we're going to see more and more increasingly intense impacts. So I think the climate emergency resolution title is quite critical uh, so that we don't lose sight of what we're actually up against. Thanks so much. Anyone else want to speak on this? I have a couple of comments. My name is Tessa Getchis. I work for Connecticut Sea Grant at the University of Connecticut. And I just wanted to thank all of you. Jason uh, made me aware of your efforts. Um, I've been out of the country for a while, but 
Thank you so much in all of your considerations, especially those that are political in nature, quite important. We know people who are, you know, don't believe in science right now or don't believe that all science is the same. And so I think that the considerations that you're making are important and whatever you can do at the same time to get this passed through the town is, is another issue. But the more that you can keep emergency in there, it does not guarantee grant funding, but you know, it, it probably makes you a lot more likely to secure grant funding along with other towns. Um, I did want to mention that you were talking about things that are more tangible, visible to people. So things like sea level rise, um, maybe you could order your letter and have that more at the top of your list of bullets because it's, you know, it starts with CO2 emissions. And of course, you know, that's really difficult for people to conceptualize, but it is important. Um, and I, you know, I don't want to argue with anyone, but I feel like if we give up on the idea that we in Stonington can change the climate and change emissions, then what can any community do? You know, I think we may not be able to see that, but we all contribute to it. So we've got to definitely, in my mind, keep that, keep that in there. That's really important and give people something that they can do personally, some action they can take, whether it's to impact sea level rise, whether it's to impact water quality, um, whether it's emissions or anything else on this list. Um, I, I think having actions, one action that every individual in this town can grab onto is, is key. So um, with that, again, I just wanna thank you. I think this is a tremendous effort that you've taken on and it's, it's pretty brave. It's brave and it's bold, so thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Well, I just, again, I have, I have a comment on the comments. Uh, I think basically Stonington is facing two problems. One is the immediate problem and the, and the actual financial and physical problem of the fact that we in Stonington have to deal with sea level rise in one way or another. And we have to plan for it and we have to deal with it. I mean, I forget what percentage of our tax base uh, is, is you had quoted there is, uh, is affected, Rick, but that is real and it's immediate. The other part of it is, is the whole question of climate change and what can the people of Stonington do to help minimize CO2 emissions. That is a very small part of the criticality of this. I think the real critical issue from my perspective is the fact that we are, Middletown is not facing sea level rise and the effect on their tax base the way Stonington is. So I want this to be a successful action plan. I don't want it to turn into a political statement that people will be fighting over forever. And again, you can call it what you want. My, it's just my personal feeling is that this causes more division than it causes coalition. I'll leave it at that. Okay, well, this document is not meant to be an action plan. Um, an action plan would be volumes and volumes of, of pages like the Ben Oregon action plan that I sent you. Um, and that's, going to be discussed later on on one of these things we said that was a bullet in one of the um, items to be done or not to be done. Um, this is just uh, uh, meant to be an emergency declaration to go along um, to join with other towns to try and get federal and state money. Um, this is also is a document from the Climate Change Task Force. The Board of Selectmen is free to change the declaration in any way they want once they get it. Um, if they don't agree that they want to call an emergency, call an emergency, and they don't have to accept it as, as written. Um, but, you know, as far as the, the members of the task force, um, you know, even, you know, Dennis, your comments are, you know, you, you think that, you know, we need to do something immediately about sea level rise. Well, that to me, gone takes emergency. Um, I, and, yeah. and, but, but Rick, what I want to do is get those damn plans that we, in the reports that we've done off the shelf and into people's hands and be action, action oriented. And that's, that's what I see. 
this this being. We well, might call it emergency, call it what you want, but I want it to be. I would like it to be a something that is a call to action as opposed to just a political statement that everybody's going to ignore and keep on going forward and the, doing the same thing that they've done for for the last 10 15 years so hey, that, again, I, that's my Dennis, I, I totally agree with you i'm with you 100 uh, percent if but if they uh say that using the word emergency is going to help us get grant money to get that stuff done the, then I vote. I vote for the grant money as long as I agree. As long as we think that it can get passed, I, my feeling is that um, that word isn't going to stop it from being passed. Perhaps June has a better idea. Um, I, I like the word emergency. I didn't say that. To, I didn't say take the word emergency out. We, this is definitely. Oh no! I, I just meant that you might have a better idea of what would pass in the town of Stonington, and you know. So my, I mean. My, my concern is, so the Climate Change Task Force has asked for money from the Board of Finance for years now, and um, I'm, my, I'm, my hope is that we can call this a, a climate emergency action declaration and just add both words in there to make it even more powerful. I, my hope is that the document is, it can't be refuted. I don't want, the, I don't want to see the Board of Finance get into an argument over it. We need to fund this more. We have a coastal resiliency plan with no money to implement it. There's been no money to like, you know, put towards it to really prioritize it. This hasn't been a priority and it needs to be. So um, like even our planning and zoning, you know, regulations are a number of years beyond being rewritten because you know, that costs money and it's just kind of bandied it together. So, I, I, I want this to be something that is like when it's read and it's obvious, it's like, and this is impacting us now. It may have been slow, you know, for a couple of decades, but now the effect of it, it's accelerating and we see it and it's impacting us. So I think it's a very, very important statement. Um, um, and I don't, you know, I think rearranging the words, like if someone had said it would be good to put the sea level rise first, because that's something we see and, and we do. But so, so anyway, so that's, that's what I would like. That's what I hope the document will do, because I mean, I was on the Board of Finance for eight and a half years, and I know what the conversations are. And if it doesn't get past the Board of Finance, it doesn't get in the budget. So people aren't, you know, they're, that it's not there for residents to vote on. Um, but making it a priority by the statement, um, it has a better plan, a better chance of, you know, have, have this be in the budget instead of, um, you know, we can maybe hold off a year or two on repaving a road that's, you know, a, a C or a D. Um, so there's, there's things that can be done, but this, it is an emergency. <laughs> this is an emergency for sure. So. Rick, would it help if we took a vote on whether to call it an emergency or not? That's what I was going to do. Um, as members of the task force, um, Mary Ellen. Oh, yeah, I keep emergency in. Yes. Okay. Lindsay. Yes. Susan. Yes. Dana. Dana. Sorry, yes. Dennis? Well, I mean, my opinion is voiced no. Sharon? Yes. Julia? Yes. And I'm a yes. Yes. So we will keep emergency in. Um, but keeping in mind what Dennis and June have to say, because they're going to help us get this going. Right. <clears throat> As I said before, I'm all in favor of all the points of it. I just want to see a coalition built as opposed to a, well, it doesn't matter. It does. The, the, well, the organization, the, the task force has spoken. So I will abide with the uh, task force's uh, vote. Okay, the next comment was whether to add Helen and Sarah's names in. <laughs> 
uh, in the first paragraph here. Um, Helen and Sarah, do you have a preference? Do you want your names in this document? Or you, do you want to wait until we get done with the document to make that call or what? Personally, don't have a preference. It, I, I don't think it, it wasn't me who made that comment, definitely, but so I don't know who that was. But either way, I'm not opposed to it or like necessarily like I would be upset if it did happen or did not. So whatever you guys think is appropriate. Okay. Um, this comment came from someone in the task force. I'm not sure who it was, but um, task force members, do you, do you all agree that we should keep their names in? Yes. I think it's fine. It's a good idea. Mm -hmm. Credit where credit's due. Right. Okay. These next um, bullets, um, what my attempt was there um, was just to use scientific data. And then these came from uh, the NOAA and, and uh, NASA websites um, as far as reasons for why this is an emergency. And basically these five bullets um, while they're not local, um, they do show on a global scale that, um, you know, everything's getting worse every month, month after month. Um, so, um, I didn't receive any comments on that. Um, so I don't know if anybody has any opinion on that. I leave them in, but also um, cite where they came from and their date. Um, Maybe it's in there. Well, the the the, the charts all, all have the data source on them, um, and the date um, is uh, you know it would be whatever was most recent on their website. I, I mean, I could go back and try and find that, but. It's all recent data. Um, I would also add. I would also add our local, um, our local data because I think since in the last uh, twenty or thirty years we have um, sea level rise of six inches, and it's accelerating to the point where they predict in the next ten it'll be another six inches. Um, and I don't. I, it was from. I think it was from the NOAA site. It was from one of those sites. And there's, it's over 700 daily data points. So it's not just one data point at full moon, high tide. Um, it's an impressive number of data points that they, they have this projection. I'll look for it. Um, but if we can have something like that, like the, the global is good, but the local is also like, how it's really impacting us right now. <clears throat> Even better. Here. Yeah, um, with the local data, um, I know there's always been some controversy about how accurate it is because they they switched their methodology um, and that really the only truly local data we have is the, the New London tide gauge um, and, and that is um, not really showing a dramatic increase um, but um, you know I, I can look up that tide gauge if you want, um, but I'm not sure it's going to add a lot of value um, to the argument because um, I mean, we, we there, is, there is no um, government agency that, that is using that data to, you know, declare that, you know, this is an emergency, I don't think, but um, I can look, but um. Rick, this is Dana again. Um, Chris Gasorik, uh, I think he got it from the Tide Gauge records in New London. If not, he got it from somewhere else. But he tracked the number of storms and how much the storms have increased over the previous storms in terms of height. And it was some pretty dramatic footage in the 
he was looking specifically at Mystic Seaport, but the number of times a year that Mystic Seaport had an event that flooded certain docks, and it's remarkably more frequent than it was 20 years ago or 30 years ago, or even 10 years ago. So if you wanted to talk to him, I'm sure he'd share that because it was public information. I'm just not sure where he got it. Mm -hmm. All right, that might be a possibility. Uh, and the other thing, I, I, um, I'm trying to keep this document from getting so long that people won't read it. Mm -hmm. um, so, I mean, we could throw in a lot of data, um, but <clears throat> whether it adds a lot of value, um, I'm not 100% sure on that. But. Um, can I just add a comment on that? I think um, to Dennis's point, um, those particular readings um, have sort of been latched onto by some people in town um, in their conversations, you know, finding ways to call them, um, you know, controversial, et cetera. Um, and because of that, because we know that that's um, sort of an argument that circulates around town, I would want to avoid using those specific data points um, to keep that argument out of it. Uh, I uh, heard a former candidate for first selectman who will go nameless at this point in time mentioned exactly that that uh, that question yep and i and i think several people in town um have heard it and repeat it um and uh I, yeah i i think that's one of those uh things that people will grab onto so yeah i'd i'd avoid that but i'm really interested to hear about chris kasorik's information Okay, um, next comment was just um, change um, declaring to supporting in this paragraph here. Rick, this is Susan. Can I ask a question yes. pertaining to prior conversation? At this point, we're only talking about the cover letter that is forwarding the uh, declaration to the selectmen. Does this um, cover letter really have a life beyond that being accepted? I mean, we're laboring over the, the wordsmithing here, but does this thing just, it, where does this live in posterity after the declaration is approved, assuming that happens? Does it just disappear? Um, it might stay, say, be put on the climate change webpage, but other than that, it, I wouldn't expect it to go anywhere. Um, if you recall, in, in Danielle, Cheeseboro's email to me, um, she was kind of asking for a white paper, um, and this would kind of be the white paper to, in, in preface to the declaration to know, you know, why we, why the Climate Change Task Force thinks that we need a declaration. Okay, um, and that makes sense, but that it, it I guess it, I'm not sure what its, its purpose is going to be, you know, we're, we're so worried about who's reading it and how are they interpreting this, but it may be that after the declaration is accepted, that this just fades, is just another piece of paper on the, on the website. It's not really um, an active document. So right. my point the, the, the punchline to that is I'm not sure we need to labor over the science as long as we um, have established the case for why we think it does exist. And I would say, like, we don't need to keep rehashing all the science. I think we should just move on. Okay. Um. Rick, I just want, I want to say that once this is adopted by the Board of Selectmen, we plan on distributing it to everyone. So it's not just going to be a quiet document. It'll be distributed to everyone on the Board of Finance, the Board of Education, Planning and Zoning, all the boards and commissions. Um, it'll be on the town website. So it just won't be on the Climate Change Task Force. No, uh, but you're talking the declaration and not this forward yeah. letter, right? No, the letter is just as important. I mean, the letter has just as much information as to why you're requesting that. The, the, um, All right. Well, that, I mean, that's up to the board of selectmen how they yeah. distribute it. But just, just so you know, it's 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 a lot of it's a lot of work and it's good information. I'm it's not no. going to sit idle. Um. <laughs>
Um, I, I was just going to say, as long as we're wordsmithing, I'm actually concerned about the, the word supporting because I, I don't think we want to support a climate change emergency. We want to support That's a not a climate change emergency. No, this so. is by supporting a climate emergency declaration in mind. Yeah. It, oh, yes. You're right. I'm sorry. I missed the word. Never mind. It's declaration, <laughs> Lindsay. Rick, I had, you, I'm going to put myself on mute. You all just move on. Thanks. <laughs> Rick, I had a comment about the last part. Mine says, we hope that the borough of Stonington and Stonington, and then it stops. We're not down there yet. Oh, okay. So this by supporting a climate emergency declaration is okay? Yes, and I apologize. Okay. Yes. Um, okay, that was a deletion. Yeah, these are the only three towns in Connecticut that have approved a declaration so far, right? Anybody know? Yes, that's true. New Haven, New Britain, and Middletown. Yes. Yes, those are the ones that have passed it. There are more considering it just like you are, but those are the three that have passed it. All right. Now we get back, we get down to the declaration. Um, <clears throat> Rick is still that last sentence. We hope the borough of Stonington and Stonington, right after where it says, in the current generation of decision makers had when they were young. And maybe my, oh, look at that. And see, that didn't show up in mine. Good, okay, no, that's fine. Okay, I think Julia, you were just missing the comments. It was cutting them out for you, but. Right, okay, thanks, that's good. All right. Oops, undo. Okay, these first things there, um, most of this came from the, either the other document or um, one of the either New Haven or Middletown um, documents, um, or I added things like that this Circa um, thing is from the Circa website. Um, the goals come from the C GC3 website. Um, Rick, on the very first paragraph, I have a comment. May I make that? Yeah. Okay. The Board of Selectmen and residents of the town of Stonington recognize Eisenhower and makes a commitment. I think it should be make because it's two, it's two things. Board of Selectmen and the residents make a commitment instead of makes. It's both the Board of Selectmen and the residents. And when you have two, they don't makes, they make. Totally correct, Julia. Okay, so. Okay. Um, Susan, you gave me this comment about deleting Stonington's. I didn't quite understand it, but. I have a comment on Susan's comment, and that is, I think. There's a typo over there. We either have to say the town of Stonington, or maybe we can just say Stonington every time. Is it, it is obviously the town. Uh, I think my comment was just intended to correct the typo. What was the typo? Stoning. T There's no T. The second T is missing. Oh. That's all. That was my comment. Oh, okay. 
<laughs> in the what in the bullet that begins the town of Stonington's 2015 plan, I think it should, I think it would read better as the town of Stonington's 2015 plan of conservation development requires that the town prepare or requires the town to prepare, but not requires the town prepare. I mean, I think either one of those would be better, but do what you want. Okay, the 53% uh, the that came out of the CR Coastal Resiliency Report um, Hazards Mitigation Plan came out of the Hazards Mitigation Plan. Um, degrees of change that came out of our, a newspaper article in the Wall Street Journal, um, and not the Wall Street, uh, the Washington Post. Now this one, um, this was a region, no. Sharon added this one um, and I don't have a problem with it. Um, I think I took it out of the original document and changed some of the words around, but I think I, 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 that's where it came from. Okay. The one that Helen and uh, Sarah submitted. Uh, and this next one um, is something that um, we need to talk about. Um, Sharon put back the original um, document about uh, um, the Coastal Resiliency Plan I had in there um, that we had a coastal resiliency plan. Um, it's just a matter of whether we want the more more detailed. I don't really care either way. Anybody have any strong comment? Any any strong opinions? I'm neutral. I think the rationale is you're trying to say, look, we've, we've done these good things, but there's more to do. And yeah. Also, I think the 354 page report, you know, suggests to whoever may be reading this in connection with perhaps an application for funding, recognizes that this is not just some 10 page thing that somebody made. It's in fact a massive effort, which it was. Okay. Yeah, I'm going to back up a little bit here, it, and it, again, it's semantics in, in the title, but a lot of the things we have identified here are more towards environmental sustainability as opposed to climate change. Uh, my, my particular one that I picked up on since I've been working on it for about uh, 30 years is the completing of Brownfields inventory. Uh, its impacts on climate change is kind of minimal at best. So I, I just kind of feel feel that if somebody's looking to start <coughs> shooting holes in it, uh, this would be one of those places. Um, I understand what you're saying. Um, a lot of uh, some of these things came and I think the brownfield inventory came from the Sustainable CT website, which in the Sustainable CT is is all about um, doing things to mitigate climate change. So I think you could argue it either way. Could I make a note on the brownfields? Yep. So part of my career, I worked uh, for engineering firms where we actually remediated brownfields, uh, the ones that were contaminated. And uh, we, uh, either did uh, build things in them for community resilience, uh, which addresses climate change. And we also built uh, uh, protective environments such as wetlands and other and forests that sequester carbon. So depending on what you do with the brownfields, once you've identified them, 
uh, it can have a significant impact on addressing climate change. Okay. Um, so does anyone else have any issues with this up here? Talking in the title um, of this section, mitigate climate change. I mean, I I can see that the brownfields thing is a little bit of a, a stretch. Um, uh, we could it could, as as Roger was saying, you know, um, help in the future. I also don't know that it takes away anything either i'm oh well, my only my only question about it again is that if somebody's going to sit here and start picking nits with it you start getting into things on okay reducing trash uh, uh the uh the pollinators uh you, you start you have a lot of things that are indirectly and again i will defer and say indirectly related to climate change, but you really want to sit, highlight the fact that these are the, these are the things, if you're going to talk about climate change, these are the things that studying it has done to address the climate change problems already and strongly and strongly put those in there. Or you change the title and say, have done to, to enhance climate sustainability or something like that. Again, I'm, I'm just looking at the semantics of the whole thing and this is not a, 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 a hill that I would like to die on, but I'm just trying to improve this to, to, get, to get acceptance over a broader community and not have people shoot holes in it. Anybody else? Yes. How about completed a brownfield inventory allowing for future development projects that offer resistance to climate change. I have no problem with that. What was that again? Completed a brownfields inventory allowing for future projects that offer resistance to climate change. I mean, I didn't think too much about it, but that's just what came to me first. And that ties the brownfields inventory to something that does have to do with climate change. I think if Dennis doesn't have a problem with it, probably okay. No, I, that, I like making the connection, make it easy for people to understand. Yeah, I, you, you want to see things that are related to, I mean, we say that this is what we've done about climate change. Let's make sure that people understand what it's done about climate change. As I say, I have worked in the, the Brownfields area for about 30 some odd years now. I forget when, 1980, I guess it would be. So it was 40 years. And uh, yes, they can be done that way. But most of the time, you're dealing with a completely different problem. All right. Well, Rick, how about we just change that header? to say the town and its residents have taken steps to mitigate climate change and enhance st enhance sustainability or, or some such language so that it's not just limited to climate change actions. That works perfectly as far as I'm yep. concerned. I'd say increase sustainability. And increase sustainability. Yes, I didn't have the right words at my fingertips. Um, Super. And then, and then we actually don't need to add the thing about the the future pro uh, projects on the brownfields because right. that can stand on its own. Exactly. That's a great solution. Thanks. Yeah, I like that. All right. The other bullet that was in here and Susan added had a more detailed one, and I'm not sure what happened to it. Um, it's about the development and funding of a coastal resilience plan. Um, I took it out um, because one, I, I don't think that the Board of Finance is going to fund it. 
Um, and even if they did, it would be, you know, if you recall on the, on the coastal resiliency plan, it took about 18 months to get that in place. Um, in a, in a, in a, in a, a um, I was, I'm not, it wasn't the coastal resiliency plan, it was a climate action plan. Um, that was the bullet was that was in here. Um, it would be nice to have a climate action plan. Um, Rick, that is not where my comment was. My no, comment was right, I got a couple right, of pages down. Yes, right. It's down a couple pages. Yeah, I didn't have a comment there. No, okay. We'll, we'll get to it right now, I think. Um, first one, the disc is full. Huh. Um, change um, impressive to substantial. I don't have a problem with that. This is just a typographical thing. Um, this was a main. This reduction of fossil fuel use was a uh, ad by uh, Roger. I don't have a problem with that. Um, provide funding and develop a climate emergency plan. Okay. Um, Susie suggested um, provide funding or take active steps to secure outside funding to develop and complete a climate emergency plan no later than 12 months after the effective date of this declaration. And before I got that comment, I had deleted this because I don't think it's going to happen. Um, but um, what are the your feelings on trying to get funding for a climate emergency plan? Um, right now, I don't know of any grants that would pay for this. Um, so it would have to come out of um, the town budget. Um, it would require a number of people um, going through the budget process, budget hearings to the Board of Finance saying we need this. Um, my feeling is, while it would be nice to have this, it would be nice to have the data, um, in the end, what it's probably going to say is the same thing that the state GC3 plan says. Um, that the state needs to do. Um, and that is, you know, more solar, um, keep fossil fuels in the ground, eliminate, you know, as much fossil fuels as possible, plant trees. Um, and, and so I'm not sure spending, it would probably cost like $150,000. Um, and that money could probably be spent doing something else, like putting in EV station, electric, electrical charging stations or solar panels or, or something. But um, what are the other task force members feelings on asking for a funding for a climate emergency plan? This is, can I say something about my comment? Yep. Um, I, I think the reason I put it in there is that going along with the concept that this is perhaps an emergency, I thought I was trying to light a fire under people by create, I mean, this was just something to put out there um, to get a rise out of people and see where they were willing to go. But I think we're, we are trying to light a fire under people to get some action and not just uh, another report that ends up on a shelf somewhere. Um, the other thought I had is that, you know, the, the plan 
does not have to be 150 pages. I mean, maybe we need to be thinking in terms of what could be accomplished in a year. Could we do a 20 page plan that's very high level? Could we, um, you know, do something that is modest and within the available, within reach within a year period? It seems kind of um, sad to me that we're saying this is an emergency, but we can't even come up with a plan in over the course of next 12 months. So I understand it was very pushy, but I was trying to light a fire under folks. But I'm not, I'm not hard over on it, but I want to get a reaction from everyone. I think we haven't been pushy enough for a number of years and I'm okay with trying pushy. I like the wording, uh, given the, the precedent, um, the town will allocate resources, funding and staffing to work to secure funding. I think it's ambivalent, but it also doesn't put it entirely on the town. I don't. We said they have to do that within the year. Because I think what you want to do, you want to develop a plan. And I agree, it doesn't have to be really long. You want to develop a plan so that you can implement the plan. Right. Exactly. And there are things within the resiliency plan that should also be being worked on at this point in time. I, and I like the idea of putting, putting dates on these because it at least, at least adds to the focus of getting things done. If you're going to call it an emergency, put dates on it, say when it's going to be done. I agree, given a timetable works, given a deadline. We might wait until the week before that deadline happens, but <laughs> at least there's a deadline. That's life. <laughs> or we get to yell about how we missed the deadline, but <laughs> all of that I see is as useful. So, um, I, Rick, I mean, I again, I'm again, thanks so much for letting us uh, participate too. I just, I had um, Helen and I were talking about. Um, an issue that we we noticed we didn't submit a comment on it, but I don't know Helen if you have that in front of you I, I'm gonna look for it right now, but we had um, Something that might address a little bit about what you guys are talking about um, uh, Some language that we might add um, Helen do you are you still here Helen? Do you have that in front of you? Yeah, I'm here. I have it with me um, So it's Okay, so it says, um, be it further resolved that the Board of Selectmen urgen, uh, urges the department heads, committees, boards, and commissions to establish plans to reduce greenhouse gas emissions by both the town and the wider community, placing the highest priority on providing the benefits of a clean energy economy to all community members on an equitable basis, um, and issue reports in six months, which could be um, not an appropriate timeline, but we're not sure about that. Yeah, I mean, so yeah, the, the, I found it too. Thank you, Helen. Because um, if you wanted to, if you, if each of the department heads, um, as Helen was saying, if, and from all the committees, and uh, if, we, if it was across a board, across the, the town, and each of them had to come up with their own plan of action, it sort of takes the burden off the climate change task force. I mean, you've got all these committees and commissions that have an expertise on their area. If you were to ask from each of them to come up with a, a, a plan of action, what they can do um, and ways that they can institute change, it seemed to me some really important language to again, take the burden off of the task force as, as having to come up with one giant plan, but rather spread that burden across the town. And as you all have been saying, um, you know, if each commission and committee, you know, is, is sort of compelled to buy into this and compelled to come up with their own action plan, maybe you give them six months to come up with an action plan. Um, you know, there's, there's your deadline and there's your action plans across the town and not just, you know, just by you, but by, by all those boards and commissions. So we were, we were kind of thinking that was really important language 
um, to put back in. I don't know if it had been taken out uh, on purpose or if it would just, you guys didn't like it very much, but um, we kind of felt that was pretty important language um, to maybe reinsert if you would, if you would um, consider it, we'd, we'd love for you to consider that. Could you um, copy paste that into the chat just so we can all see it? Do you have that to copy and paste, um, Helen, or, or do you want me to try to find it? Well, what, what I try to do, is, and I in the in the bullet that leads all these to the all these sub bullets, um, try and condense it in there, which the you know the town of Stonington shall develop future priorities, legislation, policy plans, budgets, and actions, um, and then um, the town would allocate additional resources, funding, and staffing to do all this stuff, um, which um, kind of would force them when they do their annual budgets um, to look at this stuff. Um, I, I didn't want to try and um, add something else on, on top of what they already do. Um, on their in their daily jobs because they are um, kind of stretched for doing things. Is there a way to make that specific ask, Rick? To um, you know, to make that ask, but to say you know to include, include it in it. their annual you know budget process or. Um. I mean, I, I don't have any problem with putting that that other bullet back in um, if you want to, if the you know task force wants it in there. Um, I yeah. like the idea of asking for specific things to be done. Um, I think that's how we move things along. Um, you know, by by giving a specific ask and a deadline. I agree with Lindsay. Uh, I'm in agreement there too. I, I don't know if it's helpful. I, I, I hope I didn't mistype anything, but I, I try to type as fast as I can. I'm not a very good typer. I, I try to type the wording from the original back in. To the, I put it in the chat, um, Rick, if you wanted to take a look at it or if anybody wanted to take a look at it. Um, it it's something like that. Um, and then I just added something that wasn't in the original document. But what you guys, what I'm hearing is that this, this idea of a deadline, which I think is brilliant actually, it's simple, but it's and issue a report after six or and if it's a it's a if it's a burden and, and I certainly understand that Rick, Rick not Rick. wanting to sort of burden these committees with another homework assignment. But you know I think if they're given ample time, then it's it is worth it's good for the the town. So but maybe if you give them enough time to do it, a, a deadline that was fair. Um, so I'll just I threw out six or or nine months depending on you know if, if that was a good starting point for your discussion. I like this. I think this, this is good. This gets to the heart of it. Because it all it's, it's just asking for a plan. It's not asking to get it done. When the town has the authority to ask everybody else in the town to do something. Nobody. <laughs> well, the, 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 the selectmen control the staff in town hall and public works. Um, but they really don't con control, the, they don't control the police department other than appointing people to the police commission and they don't c control the school board or the, or the board of education. So, you know, they, they've got like maybe a third of the town that they can actually require something to happen if they wanted to. So is it really the Board of Finance, the only group that could say you can't submit a budget without this? Um, well, it's the Selectman's budget um, and, the, and the Board of Finance either approves it or doesn't approve it. Um, I doubt whether the Board of Finance is gonna require people to submit a budget 
um, incorporating the stuff in there because there is the, the, the budget process is so compact now um, that they're not going to delay it for a, a new requirement. Um, I, I saw Roger's comment about remembering that the key point um, is to raise the awareness um, and the need to seek funding for climate impacts. Roger, do you see a place where we could add that um, more plainly into the document? You know, asking people to to do that specifically, to seek funding? Sure. Uh, you could do it in this section, in fact, uh, which is what you're talking about. And it really builds on the very important message that Dennis said that things have to have deadlines, benchmarks, calendars. Uh, one of the problems we have, not only in Connecticut, but everywhere, <laughs> is we do make plans, but we don't, don't act on them. That's my granddaughter in the background, by the way, sorry. Um, and uh, so you could put that in here as a bullet point. Uh, as to highlight uh, community discussions, uh, educations, especially through the high schools, and uh, that the funding needs to be prioritized in certain elements of the, com of the community. If you don't prioritize it, then you're not actually agreeing or seeing it as an emergency. And hence, hence adding it here would make sense. Does that help? So what do we want to add and where? Um, I see, I had sent some comments that did have a, a, see, I don't know if they made it in this one. Let me see if I can find mine here. Hang on a second. Um, Well, um, Roger is looking for that. Rick, do you have the um, that original language that Jason was talking about to add back in? I think that makes sense to me. I heard a murmuring of agreement. <laughs> um, unfortunately, when I'm sharing the screen, I can't read the chat. Ah, gotcha. Um, but it was, I think it was language that came from the original um, document, so. Yeah, I have the original document somewhere okay. on my computer. Okay. So, so instead of this, you want to substitute the, the original wording of that, um, what they suggested. I'm going to drop in the chat one, oops. Um, I don't, just Rick, I wasn't, I wasn't suggesting that we um, replace that. I actually like that a lot. Uh, I was just. Oh. Uh, I think the suggestion was just to put it back in. If I'm misspeaking, let me know, Jason. You want to add another? You want to add a bullet with that Actually, original? You know, when when I was looking at your document, Rick, which I and I, because I asked myself that same question, it seems like right after the bullets, you've got all those those bullets, and then the next, you've got those sub bullets, and then you've got the next major bullet, which is the town of Stonington and its climate change task force. I was thinking it, it could be a major bullet just prior to that one, because then it segues into this need for the greater community that you have here. So so right where it says the town of Stonington and it's, yes, that paragraph, my thought was to add a bullet just above that one. And it just, in terms of how your document reads, it seemed like it sort of helped segue almost into that next paragraph. So, um, so again, I would insert it as a bullet right after where it says, um, the, that final sentence of the monthly climate change task force meetings, the end of that bullet, and then the next bullet would be the one that Helen and I and Sarah were suggesting uh, be put be put in. 
it's a, it is a little different than the one Lindsay was pointing to as well um, that you guys were talking about replacing. It seems that it does seem it's, it, that it's its own thing. Uh, and again, I thank you. I can't tell you how much I appreciate you guys letting us uh, participate. It's, thank you. And I see Roger put a, um, a bullet point in the chat. And it's the same as your last bullet point. I wasn't sure if I had added with benchmark dates to monitor success in the comments. And I see that it was added to uh, this, the, the document Rick has, which is good news. Oh, okay. Uh, so that, that's one of the things regarding dates. And then in the context of uh, Jason's comments, uh, I think it's okay to reiterate you know that uh, this needs to be prioritized. It's an emergency. And so the way Hartford, for instance, is looking at that as we talk to, to people up there, they're saying, well, then when we make a budget, we have to say, okay, are we going to do the same old thing or are we going to see what are, how our decisions are reflective of climate actions? Does that make sense? And, you know, we could certainly wordsmith something along those lines, but um, that that's my point that I made about. I'll type something in the uh, chat here. Uh, Rick, I'm periodically saving the chat. So once this is over, I can email it to you if that is useful. Um. Yeah, probably. I was going to try and go and stop sharing the, the screen and go to the chat, but um, it might mess things up too much here. Since I'm trying to get back to where I was. All right. So we're going to add text here from chat. And that was the original version of the one that um, Helen read, right? And it's in the chat. All right. Um, the It's not in the chat word for word. I think it's probably better to go back to the original document. Jason sort of summarized it quickly. All right. It, it's pretty close, but I don't want I don't want to get yelled at if I made a mistake. I was trying to do it. I was trying to do it quick. All right. And was there something else we were going to add? Well, actually, Rick, this is Susan. Um, can you go back to that uh, bullet that I wanted to add? I think we're now we kind of got segued there. Um, if we're making that change, I would be okay with taking that out. Um, being that you say up top, the town will allocate additional resources, funding, and staffing. Um, I don't know, do we want to still say to complete a climate emergency plan no later than 12 months? Because isn't that going to conflict with the new bullet that you're now proposing to put in from the chat? I mean, this is really the nuts and bolts of the whole thing. You re we really want to get this part right. We can't have conflicting um, action items here. So not having that other language in front of me, I'm not sure if I'm, um, if we need both. Okay. I don't know, other people want to weigh in. I'm not sure we need. Your, uh, yes, uh, I think you, if you go for um, an emergency plan no later than 12 months, and then you can, uh, say something, comma, that should include and include some of the words that Jason had in there. You could do it that way. So, you know, you're saying we need an emergency plan and here's some of the things we expect to see in it, that kind of thing. Does that make sense, Jason? Yeah, it does. And I totally understand what, what you guys are saying. Um, what, what if when, when I read this bullet, um, here that you guys are talking about um, that uh, 
now we're talking about the town, right, as a whole that will develop a climate emergency plan. And I would think that when I read that, that that would come after the collection of the reports that come from each of the commission's boards. And so so that, that that was a sort of separate thing that the work would be done over maybe a six month period, uh, you know, in on each board and commission. And so that was sort of separate, but that this one said that in, in the, on the whole, the town would come back with its climate sort of an emergency plan as a whole. And so that would, and so 12 months, it, if we explain it, I guess the right way, and Roger, I, I, you know, I was definitely drawing on language from other um, uh, documents as well, but it seemed to me that this was saying basically that after all that information comes in, um, then there'll be a singular plan on the part of the town um, yes. based on those six month reports. Does that make sense, Susan? If it, in Goes to me. Yeah, that's a good way to put it. Right. I, I agree that we didn't, you know, this was suggested before we had that other language there. Right. Um, so we could, um, I think we're going to end up not voting on this tonight and we'll have another chance to look at this, I guess. Um, but um, maybe that needs to be taken out of that section and put the, the chat language from Jason in here and then make this bullet like the hat to complete a climate action plan no later than 12 months as, it, as its own section. When yeah. would our next meeting be? Is there a chance to do something else, for example, uh, put, put this document together and send it for Rick, Rick to send it around again. And, and if anyone has any complaints to, to put them in and then have another quick meeting if we need one. But, you know, rather than going to our next meeting, which might be some ways down the pike. Our next meeting would be December 17th. Okay, well, that's close enough. I mean, I think we have agreed on letters that have been sent in the past via email, um, but I don't know how okay that is for um, something this large, I think that would be up to up to Rick. I agree with you, Lindsay, you're right. Um, I mean, I would probably be fine with that. that. Quickly. <laughs> if we're going to have a meeting that quickly, uh, I didn't yeah. know that would be canceled because of this one, but if we're having one that quickly, we don't need to do that. Well, this is a regular scheduled meeting and the one in December is going to be a special meeting? If we uh, wanted to meet again, yes. Technically, they're all special meetings because we're not meeting in person. Um, oh, okay. A special meeting, um, but um, normally we wouldn't meet again until January if we follow our every other month schedule. But we can meet. We can meet in December if we want. Well, it's still fresh in our minds, and we can just make sure it's wrapped up. Yeah, and and Rick, I, I, I and the, and the board members, I, I might just say throw this out as a quick fix not that i'm trying to um take any corners but if, if you switched the two paragraphs and the, the placement of the two place things that we're talking about you so where it says provide funding or take action steps for the yeah so you switch that out and you make that the larger bullet right because that's the culmination of everything. and then you take the one that we are going to insert and you put that one where the other one was kind of switch the two i don't know if that satisfies what what you're looking to do. I don't know if that's enough, but I, um, I think that's quick what they were yeah. suggesting. Right, Susan, you were suggesting that? Yes, but I don't think you need the first part of the paragraph of the, of, of the, as a result of moving it down, you could just say, town shall complete a climate emergency plan no later than 12 months after the effective date of this declaration. And then up above, you can use the language from the chat that they're proposing for the six months or the nine month town boards. Does it make sense to add to that paragraph that the, the, the result of the um, work that's done in those six months would be to support the um, climate emergency plan effect, um, 
you know, at the 12 month mark, I'm not, I'm not forming those words correctly. <laughs> but does it make sense to connect the two to say that one supports the other? Well, I guess what you could do is in the same bullet, insert to, uh, to in order to meet this schedule, blah, 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 the, the town, you know, the, the words have a, like a transition phrase and then insert that other bullet right here as part of the same paragraph. I think we're all starting to fade. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I agree. So, something along those lines. I think it would be nice to just make it clear, even if it's up in the other bullet or wherever, that, you know, this the six-month plan supports the 12-month plan. Yes, I would agree. That's, I would. That's wise. All right. Um, since we aren't going to approve this tonight, um, I'll work on that and send it out again. Um, and um, so you want the, the essence of that um, wording that's in the chat to continue in this paragraph here? Yes. All right. Okay. Okay, this next bullet, there is sort of a, a typo or grammatical issue. Um, when you go down to the town commits to an equitable transition to a fossil free fuel economy, and then you, it needs to have a that or which requires full community participation. Yeah, or the town acknowledges that an equitable transition to a fossil free economy requires full community participation. This includes- again. Um, beginning the town of Stonington and its climate change task force underscore. Okay. You could say the town acknowledges that an equitable transition to a fossil free economy requires full community participation. This includes support in the future for a carbon free carbon pricing and dividend policy on the town and state level. Um, so what do you want changed? So Rick, after it says affects people of color and or people who have low incomes, yep. the town commits to an equitable transition to a fossil fuel free economy, which requires, you, you, you need a- uh, so That requires. Why you that, say that requires. No, the, that goes before. So that goes before the word requires. That the, requires. It requires full community participation. Okay, that works. All right. Um. I, I have a small thing. The second sentence in that paragraph. Mm -hmm. I think you could strike environmental injustice is recognized as, and simply say, this is a social justice issue. Okay. I, I think that's it for the first draft here, other than adding in that Yay. comment in, in the chat. Um, there was some question, Rick. Let's say you write an absolutely brilliant bullet point or two bullet points that encompass all that conversation that we had. Um, 
and uh, the other changes we've agreed upon here. Is it possible to approve this by email or is there benefit to doing that in terms of the uh, schedule of the selectmen meetings um, to try to approve it earlier than a meeting in December? It, I Plus minuses is it possible, I don't know. Um, I guess we, we could, um, as long as there's not a lot of discussion via email. Um, we're, we're not supposed to collaborate, um, you know, trade emails back and forth um, because this is supposed to be public, um, open public documents. But if we're just going to, it seems like we only have that one additional change and then maybe any minor um, corrections to for typos and stuff or whatever. Um, we could probably send that out and you could either say yes or no. And if we have too many, too much controversy, we'd have to have another meeting. If the task force wants to do that. I'd support that. Yeah, I think we've uh, spent enough time on this at this, this point in time that there should be a general agreement on most of these points. Agreed. I think this is really good work. I think so. All right. A question for June, just, I mean, it's a little bit of a tangent here, but a question for June. Given our um, current coronavirus virtual meeting environment, how are other boards and commissions getting business accomplished? Are people using email to do it? Are, are we the only ones struggling with not enough time and too much to do? How is that working? Well, they're having additional meetings and because um, you can have a special meeting in two weeks. You don't have to have it. I mean, because all the meetings are virtual, they're all special meetings. So as long as you have an agenda and it's posted within 24 hours of when you all want to meet, um, you can meet. You can meet in two weeks. But Rick is correct as far as a lot of conversation going back and forth with decisions and suggestions um, that is outside of the Freedom of Information guidelines. So um, I, you know, have another meeting in two weeks. It's not, we can all do it, you can all do it Zoom wise. So that's, that's what everyone's doing. Great, that's good to know, thank you. So I would propose we have another meeting so we don't run afoul of any of those guidelines. Okay. Um, I mean, other people can certainly weigh in. I mean, if it's if it's um, better to meet for a super quick meeting, uh, you know, after getting those changes done um, and just log on and vote, <laughs> I'm fine with that. Um, I mean, we don't have to wait till the December 17th, um, but finding another meeting time that the task force is available. Um, I don't know. I don't know what the people's schedules are like. Um, How about next week at this time? Um, that would be Thanksgiving. So, oh, uh, <laughs> no, thank you. <laughs> so <I'm sorry. laughs> um, I think there was the suggestion of three. I'm to find that turkey. I want to get this thing out. This is important, but um, <laughs> but I guess not as important as Thanksgiving Day. Well, what about December? Third. Sure. Can all the task force members meet on December 3rd? Yes. Quick meeting. Quick. Well, we can hope it's going to be quick. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I can. Yeah. So did everybody say yes? yes. I'm trying to find my calendar, but I think it's it, it probably is open. I think it's all right. Mine's not here either, but let's see. My calendar is looking pretty blank. I'm glad you all have things to do. Just right. do me, Sharon. That's all I have. We will try and meet on December 3rd to finalize this document, which that would probably work well because I believe the next select meeting is December 9th. Uh, I, well, 
Never mind. I was going to say I have an Inland Wetlands Committee meeting uh, that day, but uh, we're now doing it at 1 o'clock in the afternoon, so 7 o'clock would work. So, Rick, if we met on the 3rd and we approved it, and then the selectmen meet on the 9th, does that give them enough time to digest it? I don't know. They might not even want to take it up on the 9th. Um, you know, they might take it up sometime in January. But at least it would be before them um, on the 9th. So is that everybody in, in agreement that we will meet on the 3rd? Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. All right. Um, so moving on, um, Yukon Climate Change Corps Spring 2021 was looking for ideas uh, for things to do. Um, First selectman had a phone call with Yukon people and um, suggested some of the things I sent to you to you in that previous email. Um, there's going to be, I mean, if we have other ideas, um, we can send them in to Danielle and she can forward them on to Yukon. Um, this is a one semester class and UConn is going to be working completely remotely in the spring. So um, like doing a climate action plan, they said they definitely couldn't do that. Um, but they, they are looking at some other projects, but they also have, you know, 169 towns to choose from. So they're going to pick whatever project that they're interested in. Um, so um, if you have any ideas, um, you can forward them to me. Um, something that, you know, they, uh, other things that they've done in the past, um, they've, they've helped with, um, like, um, I think they helped with designing a, a rain garden next to town hall um, that never went in, but they, they started with the preliminary plans for that. Um, though now stormwater um, activity is under a different program so that these climate core people wouldn't be doing that. Um, but, um, you know, it, it, it needs to be a fairly significant project, but something that's reasonable for them to complete. Yeah. Rick, one of the things I was thinking about is, uh, have we had any input from Keith on that as far as uh, what data needs he might, uh, might want might want from a uh, you know planning perspective. Uh, Keith was on the phone call. Um, if you recall, a couple of things that were suggested was um, do a preliminary assessment of the zoning regulations with an eye towards climate change and what can be put in there to. And there, there's plenty of towns that have already modified their zoning regulations to tighten up their their green energy and, and things like that. Um, another was to develop a GIS layer that shows uh, sea level rise um, on top of the FEMA layer. Um, mm -hmm. so there were things like that that could reasonably be expected to be done. Um, so if, if there's anything else you can come up with, um, just let me know. Um, these other things um, are just things you can look at. I just threw them out there for things that I thought were interesting. There's a climate summit tomorrow that I'm going to go to. Um, Susan and I attended the Sea uh, Grant one on um, relocation, um, and that was fairly interesting um, to see what other towns can make it are actually doing property buyouts and relocating people away from the coast um, with various funding that's available. Um, is, is there any, um, is there any uh, handout from that? I, I try to sign up for it, but I was stymied by my computer and my computer and I didn't get very much assistance from those folks. So uh, I believe there was and actually, I believe the recording of it might be 
going to be made available on their website eventually. Um, All right. If you, yeah, if you hear anything about that, I'd, be, I'd appreciate uh, hearing about it. All right. I'm pretty sure they said they were going to post the presentations, if nothing else. Yeah. Okay. At their web, on their website? Presumably, yes. Yeah. Um, any other comments? From anybody? No? We've been doing this long enough. <laughs> Motion to adjourn. So moved. moved. Second. All right. Happy Thanksgiving. See you on the Thank third. You. Happy Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving. Bye, everyone. Bye. Thank you, everyone. Thanks again. Thank Bye. you all so much.